Hey y'all, on today's video I'm going to show how this whole uh, front assembly comes off with this Dana 25 axle. We're pulling this knuckle off and I'm going to show y'all how to do a studded knuckle upgrade to make your front axle that much stronger. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first step in uh, removing this front assembly is pulling off the locking hub. We've got six uh, 9 16 bolts, so we'll get those off. Okay, so that's got our locking hub off. Uh, next, there is a nut, a washer, a nut, and then another washer. We gotta take those out. And um, also, I've converted this to disc, but uh, normally, you know, you'd have your uh, drum brakes set up right here. It's a little different. Okay, so in order to get this uh, nut and washer combination off, there's a special socket. It's worth buying the socket. A lot of people go in there with like a punch or a chisel. And I mean, you can get it on and off that way, but you're gonna booger it up so bad. When I rebuilt this axle, I actually replaced these on both sides because these were just so boogered up. So let's get this nut and washer off. Okay, so this is the hub assembly. On the back, we've got our hub seal. Inside there is our inner wheel bearing. And then right here is our outer wheel bearing. And then we had the one more washer that came off. So this is, this is your whole hub assembly. Um, next to come off will be my caliper mounting plate and the spindle. Okay, so what's different about my axle setup um, I've converted to disc brakes. This is a really cool kit. I think it's Brennan's Garage um, is where I got this from. But it, uh, it, so normally your backing plate for your drum brakes would be here. And that's also what holds your spindle on. So it replaces all that with this plate. This is where your caliper would go. And these six bolts hold on this plate and the spindle. So these are the, these are the next two things to come off. Um, then we'll have access to uh, our knuckle and we can go ahead and pull the axle out and pull the knuckle off. Okay, so there's my caliper bracket. That's your spindle. Uh, always check to make sure this bushing's good. Uh, one of these was actually bad and I ended up replacing the whole spindle. Okay, and at this point you can go ahead and you can pull your axle out. Okay, so we're all the way back to our knuckle now. The next step um, on the back, there's eight half inch bolts that holds your wiper and your knuckle seal. And then uh, the top and bottom uh, bearing retainers for your king pins, we gotta pull those off. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. Okay, so these are your bearing retainers that are in the top and the bottom of your knuckle. And it's important to keep the top one and the bottom separate because you'll see that there's shims in there and that's what sets the load on your bearings inside your knuckle. So uh, just a good tip, make sure you keep these 
separate from each other. All right, so let me give you all a quick demonstration about why I'm even doing all this. So, uh, like I said, normally these six bolts in my caliper mountain plate, that's what bolts your backing plate if your stock setup. You have your drum backing plate and then this spindle and then the bolts come through here and bolt to your knuckle. And then your hub, your hub assembly is what sets on this. So your whole rotating assembly is setting on this spindle. Now, imagine you're running oversized tires or wheel spacers. The farther out you're pushing the center of your tire, the more leverage you're putting on the spindle. And people have actually pulled the threads out of this knuckle um, just from too much weight, off-roading and uh, too much abuse. So we're gonna do away with these uh, threaded bolts and we're actually gonna stud this knuckle. So you're actually pulling on a stud on a bolt instead of counting on these threads to hold it on. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, so this is the cutter I'm gonna be using for this. It's a, let's see, 21 30 seconds uh, counter bore with an uh, interchangeable boss. I want to say it's like a 5 16 boss. I'll try and remember to link this in the description. I got this one off McMaster card. I'm going to run this cutter down in here and create flat spots for my button head screws. These are 3 8 by 24 inch and a quarter long button heads. I also got these on McMaster. But we're just creating a, a good flat spot for this to snug down to uh, just to make sure we get it good and tight. These will actually thread into the holes that are already there and then we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on it. So let's go ahead and cut all these seats in these uh, thread holes. Okay, so I went ahead and cut a couple of these just to show y'all how it works. Um, you can see I've made two nice uh, flat spots for those screws to bottom out at in the casting. Um, so I need to go ahead and do these other four and then I'll show y'all how we're gonna put these screws in. Okay, so I've got all six of my seats cut. Uh, you wanna leave as much material behind these seats as you can, but at the same time you wanna make sure they have a good flat surface all the way around for that head of the bolt to uh, really torque down to. I actually had to take the Dremel to a couple of these just to get that cutter to start. Um, after that, make sure you clean all of your shavings out and then uh, hit it with a tap. You wanna retap all these holes just in case uh, you boogered anything up or if there's just a little material left in there. And then I learned from last time, you're gonna to wanna to take these screws and grind this OD down so it doesn't overhang uh, the ID of this or um, get into your casting here. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna take these screws and hit them on the bench grinder real quick and take some meat off. Okay, so I've got all my bolts ground down now. Um, I like to put just a little dab of Loctite right here at the back of the threads because you don't want these coming loose. Okay. And then stick it down in there. Okay, and then the torque spec on these is good and tight because you do not want these to come loose. And you can see how close the head of that comes to this. If it wasn't ground down, you would be, be sticking proud of it. 
but that looks just right and uh so five more to go okay so we've got our stud knuckle done um make sure you get all these metal shavings out make sure these are all clean these threads are clean uh, i spray mine out with like brake clean or carb clean just to make sure everything's as clean as it can be uh, the knuckle is the first thing to go back on and uh, this is a good time to repack these uh, little kingpin bearings if need be and change the grease on the inside of your knuckle so here we go Okay, so we got our knuckle back on. We've got our felt and our seal and our wiper. That's all bolted back on. Next step is to put the axle back in. Sure that seals up good and then in my case the uh, caliper bracket again if, if you had your stock drum brake set up this is where your backing plate for your drums go on and then all of this gets a uh, a nut and a lock washer okay so now we've got our, our brake plate back on, uh, spindles back on, we got all our nuts and lock washers on. Next step is the uh, hub assembly, slide it back on. And then we have our stack of nuts and washers. So we'll put this washer on first and there's a keyed slot that this lines up with. Okay, so this inner nut, we've got to torque it down to 50 foot pounds. Okay, and then once you get to 50 foot pounds, so this nut is a six sided nut, we're going to take one flat and rotate it back when we're going to loosen it one. Just preload your bearings, get everything set. There's a little bit, you can just feel some drag on there right now. So let's back this out one flat. All right. And so now that our bearing's set, uh, we'll put this next washer on. We'll put our last nut on. And tighten it down. And then finally, um, our locking hub. Now, not all of these had locking hubs on them. You might just have a little cap, but it'll still be the same process. Uh, the cap will just unbolt with these six bolts. together the easiest way to torque these down is uh, actually putting the tire back on getting some weight on it do not over torque these because this is just aluminum look up the specific torque spec for the locking hubs you have but it's not that bad of a job pretty straightforward uh, totally worth the time it's way stronger now than stock and I already 
I uh, did the other side. I did another upgrade while I was on the passenger side. I'll show you all that in a later video, but I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and uh, I'll see y'all next time.